So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is the last talk for this uh, season for the IGCP Six Friday uh, Virtual Seminar Series. Uh, for those who don't know me, so I'm Luc, Luc Doucet, so I'm your host tonight. And for this final talk of the season, we are doing a special Moon Edition. And uh, we have a special guest uh, today, it's uh, Wei, Wang, uh, Wei Yang, sorry for pronunciation, professor at the Institute of Geology and Geophysics. Uh, for the Chinese Academy of Science, presenting origin of the two billion years old Chang'e 5 lunar puzzles. A uh, bit of an introduction for this, uh, say, um, for this moon edition. So I'm a big fan of uh, space science and stuff. And uh, Chang'e E5 is a sample written mission that come from the moon, right? And it's been done by the Chinese uh, space agency. Uh, I'm, a space, I'm a space nerd, as I said. And because I'm loving pretty much everything about space, I just want to, to say that having a moon rock, you know, from an automatic written sample missions is just an amazing achievement. And uh, I'm really happy to uh, learn more about the amazing science we can do on those rocks and why those written missions are very important, where your, the, the audience is all yours. Okay, good evening, everyone. Okay, uh, thanks, Luke, for the introduction and I am honored to have this uh, opportunity to share our recent study on the Chang'e 5 sample. I am Wei Yang from the Institute of Geology and Geophysics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Um, first, I'd like to introduce our team, the Luna Sample Research Team at IGGCLS, uh, which is, was uh, established December 22 last year, only five days after the Chang'e 5 return capsule successfully returned samples. So the team leader is Professor Fu Yuan Wu. He is uh, also the director of our institute. Uh, the other two important people are Professor Xianhua Li and Professor Yang Tinlin. Uh, I think these three people are mentors of our team because most of us are young scientists or engineers um, ha having no experience in studying the moon. So uh, I think uh, they also consider the Chang'e 5 lunar sample as an excellent uh, opportunity to train future scholar in planetary science for China. So, so we will continue work on this sample. And I also established a, a project on ResearchGate, which will update our latest progress. So you can scan the code to follow us. And uh, also we'd like to thank China National Space Administration CNSA and the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program, CLEP, for uh, providing us with the Chang'e 5 lunar sample. Uh, at the same time, we also want to thank our collaborators, uh, the ground application system of the National Astronomical Observatories, and uh, Professor Ross Michel. Uh, uh, from our youth institute and the Professor He Jiu Hui from Nanjing University and the Professor Zi Yong Xiao from Sun Yat-sen University. Uh, before sharing the results, I would like to uh, introduce the Chang'e 5 mission briefly. Uh, in 2004, the CLEP was officially uh, approved. Uh, which was divided into three phases with the goal of orbiting, landing, and sample return, respectively. Uh, so at that time, we knew that we could get lunar samples one day. Since then, uh, the Institute has uh, begun to prepare lunar sample uh, for research. Uh, I will introduce this later. So in 2011, after the success of phase one uh, of CLEP, the phase three was launched, uh, including two missions. One is uh, Chang'e 5 and the other 
is SANA-6. Uh, the SANA-5 mission was initially planned to be launched in uh, 2017. However, due to an uh, engine problem of the long March 5 rocket, it was delayed to uh, 2020. So we have been waiting for three additional years for the sample. And uh, uh, finally, uh, last year, Tang 5 successfully returned the sample from the moon. On uh, May uh, 18, this year, sample applications uh, opened. On July uh, 12, the first bench of samples was allocated. So uh, recently, five papers on Tang 5 samples have been published. Uh, one science paper, one national science review, and the three nature, nature papers. And my talk today is mainly about our three nature papers. However, however because uh, I have often been asked these uh, two questions recently, so I will answer them uh, today first. So one question is why are the results uh, a little different between the science and the nature paper? So I, I think the data of the nature and the science papers are consistent, uh, both age and the composition. I will compare them in detail later. And uh, the other question is, can foreign institutions uh, apply for samples? Uh, because a science paper has many foreign courses, so many, uh, so many friends uh, just thought that the sample was sent outside the China for study. But actually, I think the measurements was carried out um, uh, carry out in China. So uh, as I know, the, uh, the answer to this question is not now, but will be in uh, future. Maybe we will see a policy uh, for foreign applications uh, next year, but at present all samples must be analyzed in China and cannot be brought abroad. And my talk includes uh, four parts. The first part is about uh, preparation. It's uh, what we have uh, prepared before we got the sample. Uh, as, my, uh, as I mentioned, so our institute have uh, prepared for more than 10 years. So the, the main research fields of our institute was traditional geology and geophysics as its name. So, so if we want to study lunar samples, there was a lack of experts in uh, chronology and the planetary science. So, so the first thing is team building. So then Professor Yang Tingning and Professor Xian Hua Li joined our institute in 2004 and 2005. It's, uh, immediately the, the CLEP was officially approved. So after they came, they began to establish various uh, analytical laboratories, such as SIMS 1280, 1280HR, uh, and the NanoSIMS. And then we developed many high spatial resolution methods since then. Uh, there is a Chinese, uh, a Chinese have a saying, uh, if a work wants to do good work, if a worker wants to do good work, he must first sharpen his tools. But uh, uh, tools alone are not enough. Tools are just the tools. Our purpose is science. So we must also know what scientific question can be answered by some five sample and what problems can be solved and what should be done first and what should be done later. So first, I'd like to introduce why we uh, still need to develop methods. This is one example of uranium lead dating. Uh, because the best minerals for uranium lead dating, uh, the uranium rich minerals are very small in size in the lunar samples. <clears throat> and the common lead is more complicated than the Earth's samples. 
So if the spatial resolution is um, is uh, is not enough because such as the the beam spot is larger than the mineral grain, you will get a mixed uh, uh, LED signal. Uh, include a radiogenic uh, LED, initial LED from moon and the terrestrial contaminant uh, LED. So using this mix uh, LED to calculate radiogenic LED. Uh, the the both the precision and accuracy will be poor. So, uh, so if the the resolution is high enough, the terrestrial LED from the mirror boundary and the initial LED from uh, surrounding mirrors can be avoided. So both precision and accuracy will be high. This is why we have continued to improve the spatial resolution of dating over the past. 10 years. So first, the, first we developed the method using SIMS. In uh, 2009, our spatial resolution was 10 microns. In 2011, the illumination of the primary iron source of the SIMS was improved. So we got a higher resolution of five microns. Then we use a, a dynamic map multi-collector to improve the spatial resolution to three microns in 2020. So however, in fact, we did not know the size of uranium-rich minerals in some five samples. So in order to ensure that the age can be obtained, we also try to improve spatial resolution using nano -themes. In the first attempt, uh, it was found that although the the beam spot can be uh, can be adjusted to two microns, uh, this uh, high density beam can cause the critical uh, crater effect, result uh, in accurate dating. Therefore, we get a, a resolution of five microns. Later, we use an image mode to overcome the the crater effect get a resolution of uh, two microns. Finally, uh, this year, uh, so we upgrade the RF source to get a resolution of one micron. That is, uh, if the uranium-rich mineral of Sun 5 is only one micron, we can still get its age. So, so the above just uh, example, we have also developed uh, many methods on various instruments uh, last uh, 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 last decades, uh, such as water and the hydrogen isotope uh, analysis on nano -themes and the uh, neodymium isotope analysis on LA ICP MS. So we have prepared the methods for uh, more than 10 years. Then we, we, we are going to prepare the uh, science part. After the team was uh, established last year, we have list the five directions. Uh, one is uh, physical and chemical properties of nuda samples led by Jing, Professor Jinghua Li. And uh, uh, direction two is isotopic dating of nuda samples uh, uh, led by Chiu Li Li. Uh, the third direction is a uh, nuda surface process led by Huai Yu He. And uh, uh, four is um, uh, origin and evolution of a lunar magnetic field uh, led by uh, Su Hui Cai. And uh, the last direction is a lunar volcanic history led by me. And uh, we, uh, through discuss discussion, we finally decided that uh, if we got, if we get the sample, the first work to be done uh, is to uh, study the age and the composition of the Chang'e 5 basalt. The study on the history of the lunar volcanic, volcanic activity is very important for uh, three aspects. One is uh, formation and the evolution of the lunar crust, uh, composition of the lunar interior, and the thermal evolution of the moon. So uh, in addition, because the male basalt of the moon uh, is um, uh, mainly distributed on the near side of the moon, 
it may be uh, provide constraints on the asymmetry of the moon. So according to Heisinger uh, 2011, Tsang 5 landed at a, a, a unit P58 uh, unit in the northern part of a senior's uh, procedurum. Uh, so the P58 is the uh, is the 58 oldest uh, unit among the 60 male units in in the PKT. So, okay, sorry. So it is uh, one of the youngest basalt units on the moon. So the first question that can be answered by some five sample is what is the age of the youngest volcanic volcanism on the moon? <clears throat> so another question is whether the Tanfai basalt is a new type of uh, lunar basalt. So the orbital observation obtained uh, uh, mirrors and the chemistry of the landing site. The interesting things are the titanium and the thorium. Uh, based on the Apollo and the lunar samples, the male basalt was grouped by uh, titanium content, high titanium basalt and the low titanium basalt. Uh, you, you can see there is a gap between the high titanium and the low titanium groups. Uh, however, the Tsang 5 uh, falls in this, between this gap. So if, uh, if we look at the titanium of uh, returned samples, and uh, orbital observation, the orbital observation shows that there are not so many high titanium basalt. But, uh, so this means that the high titanium basalt was oversampled, while the, uh, the medium titanium basalt with a more, uh, which was more on the surface, but was fewer sampled. So another interesting thing is the uh, uh, soaring content. If the soaring in the landing area of Tsang 5 is from the local basalt, this means the this basalt has a much higher titanium, uh, the soaring content than Apollo and the Luna samples do. Uh, this high soaring basalt was always considered to be associated with creep rich materials. So uh, does Tsang 5 basalt have such high foreign? So uh, we, we need to verify this. So the third question is uh, about the mechanism of the long-term volc volcanic activity on the moon. So as a relatively small body, the moon may be expected to cool relatively rapidly after its formation. So so, uh, so a partially, mo a partially molten uh, mantle layer is thus ex expected to freeze relatively soon after creation. So now we, we all know that it's the Tsang 5 basalt uh, formed at uh, 2 billion years ago. So even we did not know this age, the crater, the crater chronology indicated that it, it is uh, it was very young. So why did Luna volcanism last so long? So this is another question. So there are three conditions that can lead to partial melting. Uh, first, uh, increase the temperature to uh, across the solidus. Second, uh, release pressure to across the solidus. The third uh, condition is um, lower the solidus. Uh, for example, if you have a high water contents, so the solidus will move from the, the green line to the orange line, then the could make the uh, partial melt. So how to test these uh, mechanisms? Uh, one is uh, measure the, the contribution of creep material in the source. Which uh, because which have a, 
high uh, radioactive elements and may provide additional heat. And the second is if we can find a thermal barometer to calculate the pressure, then we can decipher whether there is a pressure release. And the third one is we may want to measure volatiles, which, which could uh, lower the melt, melting point. So before we measure the sample, we, we thought we prefer the first uh, mechanism, which was, uh, uh, which, uh, which, because the young male basalt is always associated with um, uh, high thorium content uh, from the ob orbital observation. So that's why, uh, so, so let's have a summary. So there are questions the Chang five samples may answer. Uh, is the uh, basalt a new type? And uh, is it moderate uh, titanium and uh, high thorium? And uh, what is the age of the Chang five basalt? And what is the contribution of the creep rich materials in the formation of Chang five basalt? And what is the water content in the source region? So to answer these questions, we should do the following measurements, such as uh, major trace element analysis, uh, lead lab dating for the uh, uranium rich minerals, and the strontium nobelian isotope analysis for plate glaze and the merylite and the water content and the hydrogen isotope analysis of appetite and uh, melting inclusion. So uh, keep these questions in mind and uh, uh, we are waiting for the samples. So next part is about how we carry out the measurements after we got the sample. So on July uh, 12th, the first bench of Chang five samples was allocated to uh, 13 institutions. So the race was on and uh, uh, we must compete it with other 12 institutions. Uh, but that's okay because we have prepared for more than 10 years and uh, we were very confident. Uh, just one hour after we got the sample, we had a kickoff meeting. So this meeting uh, aimed to discuss how to uh, uh, carry out the measurements, both quickly and rigorously. So, so uh, sometimes there is a balance because you may get pre preliminary results quickly, but you can also select to do rigorous research, but that leaves more time. So uh, this, uh, the, the up part is a routine procedure, uh, include sample preparation and the SEM, then EMPA for major elements and the SIMS for dating and the non SIMS for uh, hydrogen isotopes and the LAICP MS for uh, trace elements, uh, then uh, phyllo, phyllo the uh, strontium and the neodymium isotopes. So the whole procedure uh, leads at least uh, 20 days. Uh, so this is uh, too long. So we think it is not necessary uh, uh, to do the measurements one by one routinely. So we just uh, improve the procedure like this. So the whole procedure is uh, uh, the, 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 the low part of uh, is about seven days. So this uh, process requires to do lab, lab dating and uh, hydrogen isotope analysis before a detailed pitchological study uh, for some uh, 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 class pickup from the Chang 5 soil sample. And, uh, um, uh, and also it requires many sample months uh, uh, to circle uh, among different instruments. So therefore, uh, although we can prepare all the, uh, prepare all the class on one month, that is simple, but we have made many sample months. 
to ensure that each instrument always have a sample mount to an analyze. So, so, so that uh, every instrument works every uh, minute. So uh, uh, there is, uh, this is uh, the first uh, two days uh, we pick up a uh, uh, class from the soil samples and uh, make uh, sample mounts and uh, map them with uh, uh, SEMs. So we have three SEMs uh, work that day. And uh, the first thing we have a uh, concern. So the, the first thing we are concerned about is uh, the, how do you, how, how do we know the, the basalt clays we studied could represent the uh, male basalt at the landing site? Because uh, for individual class, uh, uh, the individual class may be exotic, uh, maybe uh, ejecta from outside the landing area. So, so based on the uh, Apollo and the Luna studies, uh, so we, uh, the majority of the class in the male soil are local. So we need to measure more uh, basalt uh, class. So uh, make sure that uh, which, uh, what class can, could represent the male basalt at the landing site. Uh, so on the, on the third day, so after we got the uh, sample uh, for uh, 50, 53 hours, we got the first results of uh, lab lab dating. Uh, it's uh, uh, two billion years ago. At that time, we know the results is two billion years ago, but uh, because um, uh, we, are, we were excited, but uh, we did, did not know whether it uh, represented the basalt of the landing side or not. So uh, we need, uh, so as we got more and more data and we discuss the data every day, so uh, there is a everyday meeting after lunch. So we, we discuss the discuss the data. So after we got more and more consistent data, we became more and more and more confident of the result. And on the on the seventh day, we have completed most of the experiments as uh, uh, as we as we planned planned. So. <clears throat> So, so next, let me show you the results and answer the four questions mentioned uh, above one by one. So the, the first question is the characteristics of the basalt at the landing site. So after the SEM mapping of all the classes larger than uh, uh, 600 microns, so uh, we found that there are four textures of basalt clusters, uh, poikilitic and uh, subophytic and uh, porphy porphyritic and uh, equigranular. And the, uh, the major murals of the four uh, textures of basalt are similar, uh, uh, which are canal pyroxene, plage clays, Olivine and the imanite. So the minor uh, murals are spinel and uh, um, uh, potassium uh, feldspar and silica apatite, and uh, uh, the uh, uranium rich uh, murals for dating. And uh, we, we found that you, you can see uh, from the, uh, the map, the, the, the uh, murals, you can uh, the the early, uh, crystallized uh, murals uh, for the, uh, especially for the porphyry, porphyritic uh, class, the, the, the early crystallized murals are olivine and uh, spinel. So this uh, is um, similar to the low titanium basalt. Uh, also some class are, uh, so you can see that some class are coarse grained uh, fragments, which contain, just contain uh, several large mural grains, so we can uh, we can't uh, use uh, this uh, class to uh, to identify its texture. So, because the the classes are, are generally small, and uh, the model uh, mural mirrorology variation is very large. So some class have. Uh, 
mirror abundances that uh, deviate from others. Uh, for example, uh, the the two fragments from the table and uh, and uh, and the other three classes. So so if we uh, uh, just exclude the, this uh, five class based on other class. We find that Tang five uh, basalt has a uh, low uh, pyroxene contents uh, uh, and high uh, uh, plagioclase contents. So, which is uh, very similar to the high alumina basalt. And uh, the imanite in most class is uh, less than uh, ten percent, uh, which is also uh, similar to the low titanium basalt, so so uh, so all all these class are likely uh, from uh, a single uh, basaltic lava flow in uh, as indicated by the chemistry of the clino pyroxene. Uh, this is uh, the data from the nature paper and uh, the science paper. Uh, so the actually they are the same. So the uh, mg number is from uh, uh, zero to sixty, uh, indicating that uh, uh, this mineral crystallized through through the whole cooling event, and uh, the uh, titanium number uh, versus uh, mg number and the titanium versus uh, titanium versus alumina fall along the same lines, indicating. Uh, so indicating all the clusters crystallized from magma with similar composition. So the, the range in textures of the Tang 5 basalt class is probably due to different cooling rates uh, within different parts of the lava flow. So uh, the, the whole rock, this is uh, the whole rock uh, composition calculated from the uh, Composition of the murals. So this uh, variation uh, all show uh, correlations. This may reflect the different abundance of murals due to the uh, small uh, sample size of the basalt cl class. But on average, they they are highly involved. Uh, they have low uh, magnesium. Uh, value and uh, high uh, iron contents, and uh, the they have moderate uh, titanium of uh, five point seven, and uh, this is uh, just uh, similar to the uh, bunk soil reported by the uh, NSR paper. So the tri triangle in the, these figures are the uh, bunk soil composition. So this basalt. So we are sure from this. Uh, uh, results, uh, this basalt can represent the local male basalt. So the next question is about the age of the basalt. These are the uranium-rich minerals we found in the samples. Uh, here, is a, uh, here is a list. So all these uranium-rich mineral grains are smaller than 8 micron, and most of them are smaller then five micron. So, uh, because there are four types of the basalt, so uh, all the four types of basalt yielded uh, similar isochrons. Uh, they, are, they have consistent uh, uh, y-intercepts and uh, slopes uh, within uncertainties. So they have, uh, this means they have identical age and probably derived from the same source. So this is, this is also another piece of evidence that all these basalt clusters are from one lava flow. So a, a, a total of 159 analysis with uh, with uh, the, the the uranium rich minerals form an uh, isochrome yielding uh, an, a lead lead age of 2030 million years ago. So uh, 
so the eight results of the nature paper and the science paper actually are same. So when we plot the data together, you can see uh, the, the only difference uh, are uh, our work have more data from more grains. So uh, we have a, a higher precision. So let's, let's uh, turn to the, uh, the third question. So the contribution of creep rich material. First, we measure the trace elements. Uh, and uh, these are trace element composition of clinoperoxine and uh, plagiocalase. Well, if we assume that the average uh, pyroxene or uh, plagiocalase composition is in equilibrium, equilibrium with the whole rock melt, then we can calculate the composition of the whole rock. So using this method, we calculate the uh, whole rock, the, the, the red line in this figure. And uh, you can see uh, it has a high uh, rare earth element concentration and uh, uh, LRE enriched uh, patterns which are very similar to creep basalt, the, the, the green line. Uh, um, and uh, it also has high thorium. If, uh, this, uh, if uh, this is a result of involvement of creep rich material, uh, it should be contain about 40% of creep. So, so uh, using this result, uh, we may want to write a paper titled a uh, creep origin of the uh, Tang 5 basalt. Uh, but th there is, a, the, there is a, a contradiction. So when we discuss the, 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 the data, because the latter dating not only get the uh, age, but also obtain the initial uranium net ratio of the source. So uh, the, the mu value uh, indicates that the source is creep uh, poor. So, so uh, a real earth element and the soaring uh, contents may may not result from the involved creep, but uh, but from other processes uh, uh, such as. Uh, partial melting or fractional crystallization. So, uh, so, so uh, we want. So the uh, we 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 decided to measure strontium uranium isotopes to uh, test this uh, hypothesis. So, after we get the uh, strong, after we got the uh, strontium and the uranium uranium isotope composition. So. Uh, we are totally uh, uh, surprised. So uh, th uh, this is a uh, strontium uranium isotopes of the Tang Fai basalt, the, the red uh, spot. So you can see that uh, they are not consistent with uh, those of creep, the, the green line and uh, the, the Tang Fai basalt. So this means the Tang Fai basalt must derive from a depleted source. Uh, and uh, uh, based on the uh, the initial uh, ratio, uh, uh, Rubinian and uh, strontian ratio and uh, 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 Leodemian ratio, and uh, uh, so the we can calculate the contribution of a creep uh, rich material is less than uh, 0.5 percent. So this means uh, the creep association may not be a, 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 a so may not be a prerequisite for uh, young male but volcanic uh, activity on the moon. So, uh, so the next thing is how to explain the high uh, rare earth elements and the soaring contents of Tang 5 basalt. So at first we want to explain it by an extremely low degree of um, partial melting. So, but it seems impossible because it cannot reproduce the uh, RE pattern. 
so so we uh, use another model. So uh, uh, fractional cross uh, fractional cross fertilization uh, uh, was included. So res the results indicate that uh, there is a uh, extensive fractional cross-relation after low degree of melting of the mental source. Uh, uh, this scenario consistent with uh, highly involved signatures of the basalt, such as uh, low magnesium value and high uh, iron content. So the first question, the fourth question is about uh, water content in the source region. So uh, we then focus on the appetite and the melt inclusion. So these are the uh, results of appetite, uh, uh, which have a um, uh, water content from uh, 500 to four, uh, uh, 4,800 ppm. And uh, the D, uh, the uh, the D is about uh, 200 to 1,000 per mil. And uh, uh, for the melt inclusion, the water content is from uh, 6 to uh, 360 ppm. And the delta D is from uh, minus uh, 300 to uh, 800 uh, per mil. So this results actually uh, fall, fall within the range of uh, Apollo samples, uh, which uh, may reflect a multiple uh, stage process. So the first stage is um, a low degree of partial melting, um, uh, uh, followed by extensive fractional crystallization, uh, which increase water content, but not shift uh, the uh, hydrogen isotope. The second stage is the uh, uh, degassing of the uh, uh, the hydrogen from the uh, 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 par parent uh, magma, so the which will lose water and uh, increase the uh, the delta D, and uh, the third uh, stage is uh, appetite crystallized from the uh, the mouth that uh, uh, so uh, after. Uh, um, uh, uh, the silicates and the imanite have have uh, crystallized, so so we can calculate the water abundance in the mental source of the uh, Changfei basalt is about uh, one to uh, five ppm, so uh, which uh, falls in the lower range of the previous uh, estimates for the mental source of Apollo samples and the lunar meteorites. So this um, mental source of the Changfei basalt uh, was dried up by uh, two uh, billion years ago due to ex extended period of volcanic eruption. Uh, this is uh, consistent with the long lasting uh, volcanism around the landing side of Changfei. And uh, another possibility is um, the the lunar mantle may be uh, heterogeneous in water content, and uh, uh, the mantle source of Changfei basalt has relatively low water contents. So, so finally, let's uh, back to this uh, slide. Our studies exclude two possibilities: uh, the creep involvement, which uh, provides additional heat, and the high water contents, which lower melt point. But uh, melting point. So, but um, uh, other mechanisms remain to be tested. Mm. So, uh, let's have a summary here. So, uh, this is uh, the four questions. Is the uh, five basalt a new type? Uh, I think I, I think so. Uh, but uh, such basalt have have not been sampled before. Uh, it's uh, highly uh, involved and with a uh, bunk composition. Uh, moderate titanium high iron contents with uh, creep like uh, rare earth elements and uh, high fluorine concentrations. And the second question is the, the age. The age is 2030 million years ago. And uh, the third question is uh, the contribution of uh, creep uh, rich material is less than uh, 
0.5 percent is uh, actually non-creep. And what is the what content in the source region is a five to uh, uh, less than five ppm uh, is dry. So uh, at least a drier than the basalt uh, three billion years ago. So and we have a we also have a new question. So the mechanism of the non-lasting volcanic activity on the moon is still unclear. So there are other possibilities. So uh, such as a thick mega reckless and uh, uh, heat source in crust and uh, uh, tidal heating and uh, mental convection. So, uh, so these uh, possibilities we, we will test in the future. So uh, thank you for your patience. So any questions and uh, suggestions are welcome and uh, you can contact me via email and can follow me at uh, uh, Google Scholar. Thank you very much.